Happy New Year, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for another year. Let us start this year with a grateful and joyful heart, for He has given us another year, another chance to start over again. And as a way of saying thank you to Jesus for all the blessings that we have received last year and this year, I invite everybody to come and join us in worshiping Jesus. present and future, bounded by time and changing forever and daily. Let every breath declare all your glory and power. Let every voice sing of your praises forever.
Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Feast at Home. I'm so glad that we're back again to start the new year right with an awesome new series while continuing to study the awesome book of Matthew. It's a brand new year and a year of hope. According to um, some astrologer, uh, this year is the year of the ox. And um, oddly enough, Sabi nga niya, everything will be okay this year because it's the year of the ox. So everything will be ox. Uh -huh. Joke. And you're kidding aside. Like I said, we are starting a brand new series. It's called The Rhythms of Grace. And today we preach on the message, God is bigger than your expectations. Now before anything else, I'd like to invite everyone to... Uh, pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. So let's all put ourselves in the mighty presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is bigger than your expectations. Now, to dive more deeply into this awesome first talk, uh, we will be hearing from our dear builder, Cap Marty Bakiran. But before that, before I turn you over to Cap, I'd like to ask the question, what is it that you expect God to do for you this year? What are the blessings that you expect to get? Feel free to comment down below in our comment section and don't forget to like and share our page and our other social media platforms also we will be appealing to your generous hearts brothers and sisters the start of the year let us become a blessing to others uh, you can give your tithes and um, your love offerings uh, uh, and how to do that uh, we'll be we'll be flashing information at the end of this video. So without further ado, uh, we turn you over to our great builder, Cap Marky Bakir. Good morning, Feast Bidangmanan. Happy New Year, happy 2021. <laughs> and welcome to our brand new series titled Rhythms of Grace. And talk one is titled ha Hammer heals. Balik na tayo sa book of Matthew and you will hear two powerful messages today. Now diving into the chapters 11 to 13, Matthew describes the different ways that people respond to Jesus. Yes, kung paano po tayo mag-react kapag nabasa natin, narinig natin, o makilala natin si Jesus. Number one, some people are positive. Yes, some people are positive. Believing in Him and saying, oh, Jesus is the Messiah. You're the Messiah. Second is, you know, some are negative. <laughs> Rejecting Him and saying, you know, you're the king of demons. <laughs> and third is, marami po tayo nito. <laughs> Others are neutral. Diba? And these are the people who are still asking and doubting. Like who? Well, don't be shocked, huh? Okay, gula. Like who? Like John the Baptist. Yep. John, a disappointed prophet. Yes. Now today, I want to preach the first message, which is, God is bigger than your expectations. Let me read again. God is bigger than your expectations. Ang problema sa atin, sa tao, we have
have small expectations. Now, we put God in a box. We put God in a box. And nagpapaka know it all tayo. Yep, nagmamaro. Know it all. <laughs> nagmamaro nung tayo. And this was the same mistake. Para esta pagkakamali ni John. Let's read that. And it is in verse chapter 11, verse 2 to 3. Let's read. Now, John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard about all the things the Messiah was doing. So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, Are you the Messiah we've been expecting? Or should we keep looking for someone else? This was this was outrageous. This was the Jan the Baptist we're talking about. She yung prepare kay Jesus. He was the front act. John was the prophet who pointed people to Jesus. And all of a sudden, he has doubts. John had doubts. But he did. Why was he having doubts? Two words for you, brothers and sisters. Disappointed expectations. Now, let me give you three reasons why we doubt God. Because like John, he was expecting Jesus you know, to do something else. You know, he was expecting Jesus to zig, it, but Jesus zagged. <laughs> he was expecting Jesus to act in a certain way, but he was acting in another way question does this sound familiar <laughs> dinadaanan din ata natin to yung ganito diba? you know uh, we're serving God you know we go to church we pray and so we expect God to act in a certain way but he doesn't so we doubt now here are the three reasons why you're doubting or why we are doubting reason number one when we are in pain when we are in pain. Basa tayo in verse 2. You know, John the Baptist who was in prison. Diba? Hindi lang siya basta nakakulong, mga kapatid. He was at the bottom of a pit. Parang balon na walang tubig. He was at the bottom of a pit. He, may kadena siya sa leg and sa kanyang arms and legs. Ganun po dati. Now, you don't doubt when you're happy. You doubt when you're sad. You don't doubt when your belly is full. You doubt when you're, you know, when you have an empty stomach. <laughs> diba? Hindi tayo nagdududa kapag sobrang saya natin. Dududa tayo kapag malungkot. Dududa tayo pag gutom. Pag busog, hindi. <laughs> now, you, you don't doubt when you're surrounded by family, when, you're, when you feel love, diba? you doubt when everyone you consider as your family or everyone surrounding you, when you consider them as family, sila na wala, you know, when they disappear, and when you're all alone, that's the time that you doubt. Kapatid, are you also like John? You know, at the bottom of that dark pit right now, are you like John? At the bottom of that and you're also asking, Where are you, Lord, in my pain? God is telling you now. He is telling you now. You may not feel me, or see me, or hear me, but I'm here. Reason number two. When others have it better. When others have it better. Now, in prison, of course, John the Baptist was hungry. He was so hungry. All he hears is the noise ng kumukulong niya siguro. <laughs> but, you know, through the grapevine, John hears that Jesus, you know, the guy who he campaigned for, was always in a party. <laughs> Eating, drinking red wine, ang kasama, mga tax collectors, and prostitutes. Kung ikaw si John, you may have asked, why is life so unfair? 
Why is God so unfair? Now, have you ever asked that question too? When you see your worldly, cursing, greedy, philandering neighbor who never went to church, drive a brand new car, while your 20-year-old car is dying inside your garage, you doubt too. Now, I knew this feeling too well. I followed God. I sacrificed a lot. And when people didn't sacrifice as much as I did, I looked down at them. I was becoming like a Pharisee. Now, which is related to number three. Which is number three, when others don't act like us. Now, John the Baptist, he was a tough guy, no? Siya yung ma, you know, he confronted, humaharap siya sa mga hari. He confronted kings. And he expected the Messiah to be the hammer of justice. Diba? The axe of wrath. The winnowing fork of separation. Now, John was probably asking, why is Jesus doing all these nice things to people? Healing them and feeding them and befriending them. When is he going to execute justice? Bottom line, John wanted Jesus to act like him. Now you see this see the stark difference. John was a hermit who lived alone. In the desert, yes, to be the desert, eating honey. <laughs> and you know, Jesus was like a, a party goer. John was a fire and brimstone preacher. And probably, <laughs> he introduced every talk by saying, or by shouting, repent! But Jesus, he was a storyteller who told simple stories about sheep and shepherds and seeded sowers. Now, John was a hammer. Jesus was a healer. Now here's the truth. The king the kingdom needs all kinds of persons and personalities. Because in reality, the hammer heals and the healer hammers. We don't get that. In Isip natin, there's only one way of doing things. Kaya we miss out on God's visitation. Now, the religious leaders, no, yung mga pariseyo, tsaka yung mga Sadducees, yan ang ginawa nila. Now, Jesus explained it a few verses later. A few verses later in verses 18 to 19. And let's read that. For John didn't spend his time eating and drinking, and you say, he's possessed by a demon. The Son of Man, on the other hand, Feast and drinks, and you say he's a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and other sinners? Now, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but they rejected Jesus. They rejected, they rejected John. Why? Ask me why. Because both of them didn't fit their expectations. Too bad, <laughs> they missed God's invitation or visitation. Mga kapatid, don't miss out on God's visitation in your life. Bottom line, here's the crux of the issue, you know, the unsolved questions. When God doesn't follow our will, when God doesn't follow our will. Now, yesterday, I received, you know, a disturbing message from one of my friends no and <laughs> sabi niya Kap, does god really answer prayer and dami nang nagkakasakit like sa na yung parents ko sa sakit and i'm tired of praying now this person was going through what john the baptist went through 
disappointed expectations. Now here's the truth. When we pray to God, we expect God to heal us, to give us the perfect job. Yeah. Introduce us kay Mr. Poggy, kay Mr. Wright. Diba? Yung mga humiling na mag-anak, yung they make it as pregnant. You know, grant us the visa that we applied for. Solution yung, solutionan yung mga problema natin. And sometimes fulfill our wildest dreams. And make us happy. When he doesn't do that, Boom! We ask. <laughs> Tatang tayo. Is God worth following? Should I still pray? Well, our understanding of God falls apart. But maybe it should. Because our image of God is wrong and small. Next, when we expect God to be our butler, Butler. Now, this reminds me. This reminds me of a story. You know? There was this kid. While attending mass in the parish church, this three-year-old kid was kneeling. Nakalong jud sa kneeler, di ba? Pikit ang mata. Magkadigit ang mga palad. And si- narinig ng... Kasama niya nani niya, narinig ng nani niya. No? He was praying. Jesus, please give me a baby brother. Nanay lumapit, nilapitan siya, at sabi nung nanay, Anak, what if God wants to give you a baby sister? At sa mga nang tingin ng bata doon sa nanay, <laughs> sabi niya, next Sunday, I'll pray in another church. In the same way, that that three-year-old had the wrong notion of God. What if we do have a wrong understanding of God? Perhaps our expectations are wrong. Perhaps they are too small. Perhaps we see God as our butler instead of our boss. Now, in gist, in gist, we want God to follow our will. May I speak to you? May I speak to your heart, brothers, brothers and sisters? I think we have it all wrong. I think we have it all wrong. God is not supposed to follow our will. We're supposed to follow His will. God is bigger than your expectations. God is wiser than our limited understanding so surrender trust God is at work now here's the second message for today and my second message uh, will seem to go you know off tangent but not really no. both messages are connected the you know Let's start. You act according to what you expect. Again, you act according to what you expect. Now, how many of you ilan sa inyo ang gustong tumama sa loto? Taas ang kamay. Next question. Ilan sa inyo naman sa inyo ang bumili na ng ticket sa loto. Takas ang kamay? No. <laughs> Let me guess. <laughs> Konti lang, di ba? No, I'm not. Then, eh. Hindi ko na-endorse ang loto. Hindi ko na-endorse ang loto. The chance of winning are insanely small and it's like being hit by lightning on the same place twice. That never happens. <laughs> I'm just making a point here, brothers and sisters. I'm just making a point. We don't buy a lot of tickets because we don't expect to win. This is how powerful our expectations are. 
We act not according to what we want. We act according to what we expect. Maging practical tayo dito. As we start the new year, you want a lot of things to happen in your life. But many of us want to grow our finances. Diba? Marami sa atin, you know, we want to increase yung income natin. Diba? Nang ano, paano? You know, by creating multiple income streams. Diba? But, how many will actually, you know, go out there and experiment no? some 10 things? Or yung magbenda, sell something, or magumpisa, you know, start something. But, or stumble in something and start again. Very few. No? Because we act according to what we expect, not what we want. Many of us want to grow in our relationships. Yes, many. Marami sa atin. But how many will you know, actually work on the relationships? And more importantly, and more importantly, work on themselves. How many will actually ask forgiveness, repent, and change? Very few. Kakaunti lang. Because we act according to what we expect, not what we want. If you want to change your life, expand your expectations. Expect to be blessed. Don't put God in a box. But don't put yourself in a box as well. God made you bigger and better than you think you are. Let me tell you one last story. Before I got married, you know, uh, uh, well, after after graduating from college, it took time for me to be you know, maging productive, get magaling na trabaho. You know? So I decided na magengage sa negosyo. I entered into a small business. It failed. I failed. I was a miserable partner. <laughs> And then I had an episode of drugs again. And then I started, a, you know, started a small shop when I was still hooked. And again, it failed. I got married, and my life started changing. But I still, you know, tayo pa rin ako ng shop. Nag-shop pa rin ako. And it was not doing well. It was not doing well. But I decided na maging empleyado. <laughs> now, my, you know, my expectation was that through, through this business, yung mga yung ginagawa ko, knowing that God will provide for my new family and my family's needs. But, you know, within a couple of months, hindi nga, hindi nga talaga nag-pan out. So, I had to... I, I applied for work. Yeah, I call center. And, I was starting to be productive. And, you know, God has after a couple of years and it was you know, God's plan of showing me that it's time to go back to business you know? <laughs> and it started you know it worked out now you know those previous failures forced me to start a new one you know, a new one so I got to choose you know I was given a choice by my my sister Anna, na pili ako between you know going to work 
or gumatay uli ako na siya and I chose to build another shop and that was it, the one in Ortigas my first one and you know it made me happy because it was my passion and I felt God talking to me the you know this is the time na tayo ka na business you okay ka na no and I thank God that you know my first business failed. Now, if not, you know I'd still be running. You know, I'm running short. I'd be unproductive. I'd be, but maybe I'd still be an addict. You know? But more important, God saw something. You know? God saw something bigger than me. I thought that if he's he had a big plan for. God had bigger plans for me because He saw me bigger than I saw myself. Yeah, but I urge you: when your expectations are crushed, you know you trust Him. Let God do what He wants to do through you. Now he's going to do marvelous things in you this 2021 yeah I repeat God is bigger than your expectations yeah, before we pray I want to close by you reading to you what Jesus told John to address his doubts Jesus gave him a news report of what he was doing and this was in verse 6 the blind see the lame walk those with leprosy are cured the deaf hear the dead are raised to life and the good news is being preached to the poor what was Jesus saying he was quoting Isaiah Isaiah, who prophesies about the work of the Messiah. He was saying, John, stop doubting I am the Messiah. <laughs> but I don't follow what you expect me to do. I follow what the Father expects me to do. And yet, if you read the rest of the passage, Jesus never, he never scolded John. Do you know what he did? He honored him. He said, you know, Jesus said, John was the greatest prophet. Now, it's very clear that John may have doubted Jesus. But Jesus never doubted John. When you doubt God, God doesn't doubt you. When you don't believe in God, God still believes in you. When you don't trust God, God still trusts you. God thinks you're bigger than you think you are. And this is the kind of God that we worship. God is bigger. His love is bigger. <laughs> May our prayers and dreams come true. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Father, truly you are the greatest above all. Lord, thank you for your message for today. Thank you for trusting us and loving us, even with our doubts. Yeah, Lord, in the start of this year, Lord, Still, we ask for strength and guidance, and also just you know, to keep away from what's happening right now, especially in this pandemic. Lord, thank you for making us your servants, and we always let your presence be felt, because we know, Lord, that you are bigger 
and your love is bigger. In the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Mga kapatid, <laughs> you have a wonderful Sunday and a great week ahead of you. God bless us all. The Lord is so good and faithful. Even though our hearts may sometimes waver because of uncertainties in our lives, yours didn't. You remain faithful in your love for us. Help us to become stronger in faith in you. Help us to love you more. Help us to embrace you more, Lord God. And as we worship you today, may your name be magnified. May you be glorified. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.
Thank you. 